So, I'm going to tell you something. As someone who's been making Spider-Man costumes since he was 15, I know. Duh. But that's something I really think the outside world needs to understand. These costumes are super high quality, and sometimes it's really hard for me to believe that Spider-Man made his suit, because I know how much experience and skill you would need to be able to make suits like these. Sometimes it takes me out of the movie, because I couldn't make this costume in a short video montage's length. This is heresy. But there are definitely some costumes I think would be easier to make than others. They're still way too unrealistic to expect someone like Peter to make. But I think for some of these, he would at least be able to make a crappy version of it. So I figured, why not make a tier list on which Spider-Man costumes are the hardest to make from the perspective of a professional seamstress cosplayer. Alright, so let's get some rules out of the way. No homemade suits or the inside-out suit. Only half of these suits are good and I hate the other two, and I don't consider them to be the same degree as the signature spandex. Plus, most of them can be made with spray paint and a trip to Goodwill. Peter has access to shit you can buy from Joann's. Fabric, puff paint, but nothing like rubber or urethane. There's no price limit for this video, but I'll definitely try to limit the materials used. Also, this would be really cool if I made a video series in the future, following these steps, making my own Spider-Man movie suits with one per video. I'll probably never do that. And even if I do, it'll be years in between episodes. But let me know if you guys would want me to do that, even though that I know the answer is yes. So the easiest movie suit to make would definitely be the Raimi one. If we're replacing the urethane webbing with puff paint, this just becomes a lot easier of a suit. The Liverpool red fabric would be painted over with black puffy paint, then colored with silver pens to give the Raimi webbing its black edges. The blue will also be a navy blue Liverpool. The reason I keep choosing it is so that I can simulate the texture of the brick pattern without having to put them on myself. Picking a fabric that will simulate a suit texture is very important. This is a strategy I will use often in place of painting on details myself. The logos will be done with some nice faux leather, and the soles can just be any cheap rubber insoles you can find on Amazon. Believe me, you can actually use these as soles for your costumes. You might need to make new boots every few cons, but they will definitely hold on. Bing bang! Next suit, the Raimi black suit. This suit is just the Raimi suit, but with painted black fabric. This suit would be completely covered in paint, and without having to sew any different colors of fabric together, this suit is essentially just a massive paint with minimal sewing. None of the materials would have to change other than the fabrics. I'd probably ditch the Liverpool this time and go with something that has a little more shine to it, but essentially you're just going to be painting over pieces of your pattern and then sewing it all together. This next suit will require slightly more complicated seam lines, a lot of attention to detail, because the Spider-Man Homecoming suit is at the very end of the annoying tier list. The shoulder bands could be approached in multiple ways. You can glue them on with some faux leather after stuffing the suit, or paint the bands on yourself. Either are fine, but if you use leather, you'll probably have to have some leather web shooters too. If you're him, you can probably make them actually work too. The red would be the same shiny red I've used on previous suits, but I've found that you can actually tone down the shine by stretching the fabric out, and seeing how bright the homecoming suit isn't compared to this fabric, I'll have to make sure I do that. I've also found that this spandex is really pink, so if you care about getting the details over the color right, I'd pick the dots. If not, maybe try to find something more orange, like some red Liverpool from earlier. It matches the feeling of the texture and the color a lot more than the other one does. The blue would probably be some blue checkered spandex if you could find any that make the checkers small enough. If not, I would just go back to using Liverpool, but a light blue Liverpool or a cobalt, pick one. Also figuring out this leg pattern with paint is going to suck. Using the PS4 games camera mode will definitely help with a lot of these. You could also really make your life much easier by spending so much money on printed spandex fabric for these but they cost so much for so little. I could stare at this stuff for hours though, it makes me drool. This stuff is amazing. Now let's start off with the difficult tier, starting with the Spider-Man No Way Home end suit. Same dilemma as before with the red spandex, but make your choice between pinkish red dot spandex or Liverpool, and bring back your faux leather for this suit, and make sure you ditch the wire webbing from the homecoming suit for regular webbing instead. 
Just remember the layout is almost identical in terms of the red and blue. The blue is where a lot of problems show up. Since we haven't had a lot of references for this suit, it's hard to know what shades of colors we are supposed to use. Is the logo bronze? I surely fucking hope not. Is the suit light blue or cobalt blue? Do you use shiny fabric or slightly shiny fabric? How much is too shiny? Who knows? It's all a gamble until we get a better look at it. Whichever blue you choose, you're definitely gonna have to paint over it with blue puff paint for the super complicated blue portions. At least the suit isn't any harder to sew than the homecoming one. This suit has all the pain of painting that the No Way Home suit has, but combined with all the leather gluing from the homecoming one. Ironically, this suit combines elements from these two in a really funny way. It's almost like homecoming suit plus No Way Home end suit equals the Far From Home suit. I'd keep the black spandex matte this time, and use some black metallic puffy paint. And also make sure you get your hands on some white faux leather for those emblems. Not really much to say about this one. Now we're in the thick of it. This is the painful tier. Kicking off with the Tasm 2 suit. You could argue this suit is easier than the last, but this suit has much more complicated seams on the leggings, a super small web pattern, and all of the blue fabric is painted over with black brick patterns. I'd recommend using a wine red shiny spandex and a matte navy blue spandex. If you're poor and can't sell your organs for printed fabric, make sure you use black puffy paint on your blue portions to make sure they're accurate. Now that I mentioned it, I haven't talked about how you guys are actually going to make these costumes enterable. Usually, these suits have something that's called a U-zipper. This zipper starts from the armpit and trails down your side and across the waist and back up into your armpit not the Tasm 2 suit. This suit has a weird all-around zipper with a notch up the back with an extra zipper. It's a very complicated setup. I would only recommend it if you want to figure out why people think about death so much. Also, if you use the insole method from earlier, make sure you pick them out in black for this suit. Same thing for the homecoming one. Also, my friend Johnny made a documentary video series about him making this costume and several more on his channel. Go check him out. And his podcast episode is also on my channel, which you should go check out. This next costume is a sewing behemoth. A monster wreaking havoc on your poor singer sewing machine. One of the worst redesigns ever made of a superhero costume, the Iron Spider. If you plan to even make this thing with fabric, keep in mind that you'll have to use really shiny material. If you sew in the gold yourself, probably go schedule yourself some therapy. But I think it'd be much easier to paint the gold on and only do the sewing in blue and red. This suit also has weird shoulder pads. Make sure you make some shoulder pads with some craft foam or something, and wrap the fabric onto the foam and glue it on. You could even buy some small blue LEDs and put them onto the suit. Cut a hole in your shoulder pad and put the LED in, and use some packing tape as a little window to let the light shine through. Not sure how you'll be able to make the other LEDs on the body of the costume, but I'm sure you could do something similar with the web shooters. Make those with some foam or maybe something more receptive to a shiny golden paint. And don't ask me how to do the spider legs or I'll put an ad in every single one of my videos from now on. In fact, I'm gonna fire off a warning shot. Atlas VPN. Developed by top cybersecurity specialists and IT engineers in 2019, Atlas VPN was created to make the internet accessible and secure for everyone. Currently, it has more than 6 million users worldwide. It can unlock shows that might be trapped in one specific region of the world. Remember when Spectacular Spider-Man was stuck in Canada? If you had Atlas VPN, all you would have to do is change your location to Canada and you'd be watching Peak Spider-Man in no time. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount if you use the link in my description. You can get a three-year subscription for just $1.83 a month plus three months for free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. I cannot express how useful it is to have a VPN, especially one as well made as Atlas VPN. It will protect your devices from unwanted cyber attacks, unwanted links, ads, trackers, and notifies you when someone is trying to get their hands on your data. Just make sure you click the link in my description for a three-year subscription for just $1.83 a month and a 30-day money-back guarantee, and you'll never have to worry about your grandma accidentally installing spyware on the family computer ever again. Now we're in the home stretch. These suits are for experienced psychopaths only. The integrated suit is not only one of the worst suits you could make due to its difficulty, but also the design quality. This suit is the far from home suit on hard mode. 
with more complicated patterns that implement strings of red into the black portions, giant golden emblems that if you decided to glue on with leather instead of painting, I wouldn't invite you over for Christmas because you would be a danger to everyone present because of how much of a masochist you are, the gold portions are definitely going to be demanding, with portions that vary in thickness of the gold sections and varied lining on the gold itself. This suit requires wired webbing, complex line painting on the black, demanding sewing lines, and a terrible taste in Spider-Man suits. And now, for the hardest Spider-Man costume you could make. You could argue that the last one is harder, but this one is definitely one that seems way harder to me. The most difficult Spider-Man suit to make is the Tasm 1 suit. Complex and unorthodox web patterns that change depending on what part of the body you're on, with a red hexagonal pattern paint below it, and even deeper, a darker surface between the webs and the honeycombs that needs to be applied by hand. The blue sections have pixel textures laid over on the spandex with a blue shiny stretched hexagon texture on top of the hours of painting. The seams on this suit are messy and exposed and the pattern is frustrating and complicated. Not to mention the incredibly complicated sole design and the LED web shooters. This suit is demanding and complex and combines everything you've learned about creating the previous suits if you've made them all up to this point. If you have, I will personally check you into a mental hospital myself. Safe to say, after giving you my game plan on how I'd propose these costumes could be made in a cheap and effective way, none of these suits would be something that Peter would dedicate this much time to making. If I'll be honest, Peter would probably just make the suits I usually do. Simple sewing patterns, cheaper fabrics, sharpie webbing, and faux leather. There's honestly a charm to my work, and I don't think a lot of people would be too upset if one of my suits ended up in a movie. It would probably be the most realistic Spider-Man suit ever made to film. Guess what? This video's too short, and I feel bad because I've been giving you guys a lot of short videos instead of giving you guys really long ones. Like, I feel bad because a lot of my recent ones have been like, maybe like six to eight minutes long. So we're gonna go with a non-scripted section lightning round of all the suits I did not include. Let's start with the human spider suit. This human spider suit is probably gonna be the hardest to make out of all the homemade suits. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say that one's the hardest to make out of all the homemade suits because you have to do that sweatshirt. I've done that sweatshirt before. I didn't do it very good. But it's very hard because you have to do a lot of very specific painter's tape work. You're essentially just making a giant spider out of blue painter's tape and putting a web on it and then spray painting it in your garage. And then you've got your human spider shirt. Shouldn't be too hard. And then you have to go to the back and do a cutout and spray paint that cutout over your sweatshirt. And then you have the human spider shirt. The rest of it is just a trip to Hobby Lobby and Amazon or whatever the hell you need to go to get those extra clothing items. Why did I say Hobby Lobby? And then, after that suit is the MCU homemade suit. This suit is incredibly easy to make. Again, it is just a trip to your local Goodwill with some Sharpie drawing of a spider on the front and you can make the goggles yourself or you can buy a pair of goggles from Amazon and edit those. This suit is arguably harder than the one before it, but I don't think so because with that one you have to do a lot of painting work and a lot of drawing. With this one you can really just buy a lot of shit and edit certain things about what you buy. So it's really not harder, but it's not really... It's easy. It's, it's definitely an easy costume. At the very, very bottom, of the list we have Andrew's homemade suit this suit sucks I hate it it's the worst homemade suit ever like we've seen good homemade suits this one is not it this is just a trip to your local Goodwill and Spirit Halloween just get a mask and sunglasses and you really don't have to do anything if you want to you can make the web shooters and that might place it a few spots uh, above maybe just one actually but the homemade suit has web shooters too, actually, so no. Keep this motherfucker at the very bottom of the list. And it deserves to be there because it sucks. Now we're getting on to the extra MCU suits I cut out of this video because I did not consider them real suits. This suit, the stealth suit, is a conundrum. It's definitely a conundrum. 
because I feel like there's mostly just going to be a lot of spending. Maybe you'll have to buy some body armor. Maybe you'll have to make some of the legging pieces yourself. I don't doubt this costume would be too hard to make, but at the same time I can't exactly be sure since I don't really have a frame of reference. But if I were to put it in a tier, I'm going to put it in the annoying tier. It won't be too hard to put together, but your wallet will be crying. And then you have one of the worst Spider-Man suits ever put to screen. I would say the worst, actually. This is the worst Spider-Man costume ever put to screen. The Inside Out suit. Um, this suit is incredibly difficult. It has all kinds of details and wires running throughout it. It's... I would say it's just as hard, if not harder, than the Far From Home suit. And I would put it in the painful tier because you have to make the wires running throughout it on top of the suit. You have to do puff painting, you have to do sewing, I think. You might have to do some sewing, I'm not sure. And yeah, this suit is gonna be a pain in the ass. So I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it above the TASM suit in the painful tier. So yeah, this is the fully complete and finished tier list we're looking at right now. This is, the difficulty scale you're looking at. If you're just starting out, I would recommend, you know, starting with the easy tier and going up depending on what you signify your experience level to be. But other than that, this is this is my list. This is my definitive list on what Spider-Man costumes would be the hardest to make from the perspective of a professional seamstress cosplayer. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I hope you guys liked this video. I would like to do videos like this in the future. And if you want, I could do videos like these in the future for other superheroes, like Superman. I love Superman. I've been thinking about Superman's costume a lot recently. I love his suit. It's great. It's amazing. It's one of the best superhero costumes of all time. But anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye! I did some, I did some editing to my room. I hope the sound quality is better. I'll see y'all later.